What in the world is Transcordieris? Buenos dias from Colombia, just outside of Granada. We are riding to the start of the three day version of Transcordiaris. There's a non stop, an eight day, and a three day. We're doing a three day. I'm here testing a beautiful Colombian custom bike, the Scarab Paramo, with this gorgeous Campesina paint scheme. Got the new Shimano 12 speed GRX mechanical group. It's got a 51 on the back, which I'm feeling good about. I switched the 40 to a 44. After riding these Columbian roads, which come in two flavors, steep or crazy steep, I'm not feeling so good about that choice. But it's all fun and games, right? The Transcordieris format I love for my very first bikepacking adventure. In that, there are showers and beds at the end of each stage, provided we can find our way to the end of said stage in the hotel. Some folks can race it, some folks can ride to finish it. I'm here with my compatriot and part-time cameraman Logan Von Bokel. I think we're halfway in between. Come, Come along for the ride, we'll see how we go. For my first big ride in Colombia, we commuted to the start from Retiro to Guadalupe, where I was lucky to have the companionship of my new friends Camilo and Juan, Julian and Sebastian. Also we had moto support, a guy falling behind on a scooter with a bike pump and supplies, which evidently is a fairly common thing for training in Colombia. Different kind of moto pacing, moto support. What up, cows? How you living? Stage one was an 86 mile, 11,000 foot affair from Guadalupe to Fredonia. Good morning, start of stage one. Natalia, what are we, what are we in for? What are we doing today? I don't know, man, we're <laughs> crazy. <laughs> so it's like 95 miles, 140K. 140K, almost 3,000 and something meters of climbing, but the views are nice. People are happy and let's do this. What's your one piece of advice for new newbies like me? Um, enjoy the views. Don't look down. There's so much to see and just enjoy the pain. <laughs> <laughs> you snuck that last one in there. Yeah. I'll enjoy the views. <laughs> okay. Two feet into it, the computer's starting to climb. Six miles, 10%. Yeah. Uh oh. I opted not to take my USWE pack like I normally do for gravel races, figuring I've never been in Columbia in my life. I should take advantage of the stops. The stops were quick though, F1 style in the tiendas. We came racing into Retiro, grabbed a bunch of waters, and we're off. Come out of the shop and there's an old man holding my bike for me, getting it ready to go. Nice folks here. And then, well, the folks at Hemi aren't so nice, they ain't waiting. Dudes are jerks up there. <laughs> we were racing through construction zones with barely even slowing down. Just whoever was at the front would yell out, hey, we're in a race. Carrera, carrera. And we'd go blasting through. We're out in it now. These descents are so rough. I've never been so happy in my life to start a climb. This is at the end of these back pinching, arm shaking, shoulder crunching, rowdy old descents. But look at these views. And aside from my huffing and puffing, so quiet out here. 
Stage one in the three-day affair was won by Jorge Garcia, a physicist and a guy who flies up the hills. Stage two went from Fredonia to Jericho. Our hotel was at the bottom of a long hill, so Santiago Toro, the founder of Scarab Cycles, devised a shuttle for us. Commute to stage Me two. <laughs> <laughs> the Colombian way. Colombian way. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike most stage races, where a leader's jersey designates who is in the general classification lead, at Transcordieris, the leader gets a stuffy to carry with him. It's gonna be a rough ride! <laughs> Hold on, little foxy! <laughs> Nicolas Serrano, one of the four guys who started the very first Transcordieris, took the win in our three-day division on stage two. Gracias. Thanks for the water. We're at the finish town for stage two. Came second today. Again, I was second on stage one. Today was a totally different day. It was only, quote, unquote, only 45 miles, but there was 7,500 feet of climbing. It was crazy. There was so much descending, my arms were getting fatigued. Even on the pavement, like descending out of the start town, I was getting fatigued from descending. That has never happened to me. I'll tell you a bit about stage one first. So that was six and a half hours. It's one of those days where looking at the computer doesn't really tell the story. Like you can get the stats and you're sure like average power and TSS and all that's fine and good, but just absorbing the rough roads for hours definitely took a toll. I was good and cracked yesterday. Bike talk. I'm on a steel bike, steel scarab. I haven't ridden a lot of steel in the last, oh, two decades. Definitely appreciate having a little bit more absorption than say an alloy bike. And with rocks kicking up, you know, probably a little more peace of mind than a carbon bike. Yeah, it's a bit heavier, but as you can see, I'm lugging the kitchen sink. Um, so the way to the frame is not something I've thought about. Yesterday I went a little too light on water. Looking at the map thinking, oh, we're only have 10K to go. and. Uh, nearly came to grief, had to hide in the shade for a while in order to get going again. Uh, so today, when I saw a store, I got Cinco Botellas and drank two, wore two on myself, and then shared one with Nicholas, who took the stage today. Nice work on that. Things I would change? I hate to say this. It hurts my delicate pride. I, If I was to come again, I might try the redshift stem, something that offends my delicate roadie sensibilities, just because it's, it's hard to convey, like I'm gonna be showing a lot of B-roll from the ride, but I feel the way about the video of Columbia Gravel that I do about uh, cobbles in Belgium and France, and it looks very quaint in photos, and you can't really convey how bone jarring, eyeball shaking it is, but trust me, it's, it's rough, it's very rough. Oh, there's a kick at the end. It's kicking. The dig the houses, huh? The amount of color is crazy. Like, I got to pick the paint scheme on this. It's all mucked up with mud now, but I'll show a cleaner picture. This is the Campesina scheme, and it was so cool to see that all over. Uh, one neat thing about this race is it takes you on tiny little roads, so you're able to see a lot more than you would if you were on a tour bus or you were driving around. I mean, that would be a cool experience, I'm sure, also, but just being like what feels to me like way out in the country and seeing uh, people and cattle and dogs and uh, full local flair has been uh, quite a treat for me. Transcordias, again, cannot encapsulate it into just a few words. Hey, puppy. Hey, puppy, do. I love the fact that there are perros just seemingly everywhere and they're all, they're all friendly pups. It can be a little sketchy on descents when they're just chilling in the road, but generally it's nice seeing doggos out everywhere. I can't encapsulate Transcordieras into one word, but I can highly recommend coming to Colombia if you're into bikes. 
and experience it in some way, shape, or form. It's been fantastic, and we'll wrap it up tomorrow with a ride into Santa Fe. Oh, here's it, yeah. <laughs> Adelante se va a hacer el podio y la idea es que no los no los pasemos, vamos a bajar despacio. Stage three was only forty five miles, but started with a screaming six thousand foot descent. Today's stage, stage three, was my type of stage. We descended I don't know, 7,000 feet, and climbs maybe two or 3,000. Uh, it was all paved, we're cooking along, uh, heading along the river for most of the time. The descent was neutralized, which I was grateful for because even taking it tranquilo, it was pr pretty sketch, you know, like negative 20 degree grades. Got the fox last night uh, as Jorge unfortunately got sick at the end of the stage and had to drop out. Sorry about that, Jorge. Um, was able to defend today. It was a sprint finish. Didn't know where the finish was. It was, you know, bike racing. But uh, I was able to get that and happy to go home with the little Zorro stuffy with the Transcordieris logo on his nose. I don't know if you can hear people coming across the finish line here. The atmosphere of this, of this traveling circus is a treat. There's both the three dayers, like myself, and the eight dayers, all finishing up here. Lawrence Tindam has been hanging out since he finished days ago, all 1,000 kilometers. So what does one pack for a bike packing race? I have no idea. I was just kind of winging it, talking to some of my buddies, but this is what I brought. So we've got two Ortlieb packs, we've got a four liter frame pack, and then an 11 liter seat bag, uh, which was like fairly secure. It's kind of funny doing a sprint with a bunch of weight and a fox stuffy dancing around behind there. So what do we have in here? I put, and this guy, electronics, being charger for the phone, charger for the camera that Logan is holding and shooting on, charger for the uh, Rome, charger for the DJI, etc. And then, yeah, toiletries and another bag. Saddlebag, which was just like normal fixings, right? Like a uh, couple, you know, just like this is the stuff I would take for a normal one day gravel race. Dyna plugs, two cartridges, a little thing of lube, multi tool, and two little tubulitos, and a lever. So just the basics there. So that was that, and then the transponder. That was in this bag. I also started out with some first endurance mix, which was, you know, 400 calories per bottle. I measured out enough to have six bottles, so I'd start each day with two full bottles. I would buy, a, I don't know what size, a 500 milliliter thing of Electrolyte, chug that right before the start, put another one in the jersey pocket, so I'd have at least four to start with, and then we'd stop at stores and get a bunch more. So luckily these Ortley bags come with Foxy securing straps should you find yourself, you know, in Colombia doing a race where you need to carry a stuffy with you. A lot of guys would put their shoes or sandals in this up top strap. I put a little blinky on the back. These bags are waterproof, which, oh, you know, this whole thing comes off at the end of the stages. I would often just like take this whole thing up to the room. So this guy, I mean, you could put quite a bit more in there. You know, this was an extra kit that I wash at the end of the stage. Clothes for hanging out in afterwards, which is what I'll change into now. Bird shoes for cruising around. And then a couple things just in case. Gloves. I don't like wearing gloves. I didn't use these at all, but I thought 
my hands might get waxed. And so these were a just in case thing. And then another just in case thing, it's rain jacket, which a lot of the guys were using in the mornings or in the evenings like as a sweatshirt because it was cold here, Columbia cold, I don't know, 60 degrees. <laughs> but yeah, these two things just stayed buried in here and I didn't need to use those. So that is what I put in my bags for first ever Transcordieras. <laughs> Aguardiente for the soul. Uno, dos, tres. Un día aguardiente inside. Gracias por todos. No, I did a tea. Thanks for making the bike race interesting. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You can do it, you can do it. Tres etapas. Ben Dinelli. Bueno, y el gran campeón de estos tres días de ardua batalla, tenemos desde Estados Unidos a Ben Delaney. ¿Te le dice ya Santi? Sí, sí, sí. Ben, avise. Aplauso, por favor. Eso. Eso, agárrela, agárrela. Mira para acá. Now I'm back home in Colorado, missing Colombia already. The gear was just enough. Having a 44 ring with Shimano's new GRX giant cassette that goes up to a 51 was just enough. If I had gone with their race cassette or SRAM's race cassette, the, you know, the 1044-ish range, that would have been nowhere near enough. I was grinding on this on some of those 20 plus steeps and then I was using the 4410 to sprint for the win at the end. So lessons learned for me riding in Columbia, Big gears, it's a good thing. Big tires is a good thing. You know, having a 45 Rambler up front uh, and you know, could have gone with something more than the 40 Reaver I had in the back. I could make this video 45 minutes long with all the stories I brought out of that event, but I'll try to keep it wrapped up and tidy. If you've got any questions, uh, I'll put them below. I'll be doing more videos you know, on the bike. I did a tour of the Scarab factory where this bike was you know, custom built and painted. Uh, I'll be talking more about Shimano GRX. And if you give me half a chance to catch me on a ride, I will talk your ear off about how amazing Columbia is as a place to ride. A lot of folks ask, so you're gonna come back and do the eight day? I was like, well, the friends I talked to were pretty cracked <laughs> doing the eight day. I'm keen to get back and ride more. I'm super excited to come back and do this event again as the three day, maybe the eight day, but definitely want to spend more time riding bikes in Columbia. And that is what I hope I can leave you with is that if you're into riding bikes, get yourself to Columbia. You will have a hard time doing anything but enjoying the ride.